Trump's Election Integrity Commission met for the first time yesterday, two months after it was created through an executive order to supposedly root out voting irregularities around the country. All it's done is tick off their secretaries of state across the country. Members of the commission, chaired by Vice President Mike Pence, heard from the president at their inaugural gathering. He explained the commission's importance. This issue is very important to me because throughout the campaign and even after it, people would come up to me and express their concerns about voter inconsistencies and irregularities, which they saw in some cases having to do with very large numbers of people in certain states. Okay, people will come up to him, talk about a flat out lie. There is absolutely zero evidence of any widespread irregularities occurring in the 2016 presidential election. Trump also questioned the motives of states, guess what, all of them, who refused to cooperate with the commission's <clears throat> demands for sensitive voter information. If any state does not want to share this information, one has to wonder what they're worried about. And I asked the vice president, I asked the commission, what are they worried about? There's something. There always is. Uh, yeah, probably what they're worried about is private information. Outside the White House grounds where the commission was meeting, protesters called for it to be shut down, and the Democratic National Committee is fighting back with its own commission comprised of lawmakers and state and local officials to combat Trump's commission. We understand, we hear this, this nonsensical myth of voter fraud. Uh, it is not happening. We are not seeing that. Uh, but what we are seeing is that people need to have more opportunities to have a chance to go vote, and we are committed to that here at the DNC. We do not want our sensitive personal information in the hands of Trump and anybody whose purpose is to dismantle voting rights in America. All right, let's talk about this with Democratic Congresswoman Terry Sewell of Alabama, who is the vice chair of the Commission on Protecting American Democracy from the Trump administration. Okay, you, you hear the president there, straight lying. Oh, people, people came up to me. Really? Dude, that's the best you got? Uh, and then say, you wonder why states aren't turning over information? Here's what's crazy. The guy who is the vice chair of his own committee, who's the secretary of state in Kansas, he wouldn't turn over information from Kansas. I know. Go, what gives? Well, listen, Roland, you know, to me, this uh, Trump sham commission uh, is just made up of folks who um, have sh had a history of voter suppression. Uh, Kobash, who you mentioned, who was a Kansas Secretary of State, um, was, spent tons of taxpayer money to uh, try to undercover fraud. And out of you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, people who voted in Kansas, they could only find nine cases. And those cases, only half of them were uh, actually t turned out to be the kind of voter fraud that we we're talking about. So look, I think it's really important. No one in, um, no one <laughs> really trusts this administration with facts. And so I think it's very important that our, our commission, our shadow commission at the DNC is really here to protect voter um, uh, integrity as well as to make sure uh, that we're not actually attacking Americans. We should be attacking Russians and not attacking Americans. I mean, that's, that's exactly what this commission is doing. And again, he lied yesterday. He has said three to five million people uh, uh, voted illegally. In fact, he also lied when he claimed people were traveling across state lines in New Hampshire to yes. vote. Republicans in New Hampshire said that's a lie. Corey Lewandowski, who was his campaign chair, who was from New Hampshire, said there's no truth to that. The man lies even in Republican states. I know. Well, three to five million illegals voted. Didn't you know that? I mean, this whole commission is a sham. And I think that we, um, as really concerned citizens, have to be looking at uh, making sure that we don't have voter suppression and not voter fraud. Mm -hmm. The issue really is voter suppression. You and I both know that since the Shelby decision, um, 33 states have imposed voter ID laws. So while we don't have to count how many marbles are in a jar. This is modern day barriers to voting and we shouldn't stand for it. Well, uh, and so, so the DNC committee, last question for you, mm -hmm. what exactly are they going to do? So our job really is to be the shadow commission. So to the extent that their first meeting was yesterday, we had our first meeting yesterday. Uh, we're he really here to call out the lies, uh, call out all of the inconsistencies that this commission will be doing. You know, the, it's not as if voter, I mean, election integrity is not important. You know, I sit on the House Intelligence Committee and we can be doing something as an administration. They could be looking 
looking into uh, Russia's interference. We know that it's going to happen again, and we also know that our election infrastructure is, is, is sorely in need of help. I mean, cybersecurity is what we should be working on and not on voter fraud. All right, Congresswoman Terry Sewell, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, again, this is an issue that we have been covering uh, for quite some time uh, on this show and will continue to cover. Uh, I, I, I referenced this earlier this week. I want to bring up this story. I want to bring up this story here. Shelly, go to my iPad. Go to my iPad, all right? This is a ProPublica story. This is a ProPublica story that, uh, that they ran on July 3rd. A Wisconsin Republican looks back with regret at voter ID and redistricting fights. This guy served for 30 years in the Wisconsin legislature. Dan Schultz, Republican, 1983 to 2015. He, in this story, he lays out that he initially voted for it. He then said, the point blank, that when he was in Republican caucuses, he said he specifically asked his Republican uh, members, give him concrete examples of voter uh, legal voting. They couldn't. In fact, he then put a team of former journalists and staffers in his office on this. Do you know what happened? They found two examples, both involved Republicans. That was Wisconsin. Let's go to our panel uh, and let's talk about this right now. Uh, joining us right now, Republican Kim Klasik, uh, of course, a contributor with, with politicalchicks.com. Also uh, to my left, we have Ralph Chittums, uh, who joins us also as well, of course. Uh, Jameera Burley and Joel Payne as well, Democratic strategist, uh, Jameera, human rights activist. Okay, so Ralph, again, explain this. You got this fraudulent commission. It's a joke. You have Republicans who are saying, we can't find voter fraud. Republicans. The Republican Lawyers Association uh, two years ago did, did this extensive examination and barely found any. This is a joke. Hey, this commission is probably not going to find what we would call systemic voter um, fraud, voter abuse, and things of that nature. So why are we wasting what our they, time and money? What, what they will find, though, however, are cracks and loopholes in the voting systems in the different states which allow individuals to break the law. Because we have seen, as you said, and I'm talking, I'm not being partisan here, I'm saying Democrats and Republicans, individuals have found ways because of cracks and loopholes in the voting laws to vote in multiple states. We have had um, one person who was an illegal prosecuted for voting multiple times. So while this commission may not find widespread, systemic, mm -hmm. systematic voter abuse, what they will find are cracks and holes in the system, which then the states can go back and fix. Kim, you're a Republican. Uh, Trump talks about people being registered in, in, in uh, two states. How about he look at his own family? How about look at Steve Bannon? Mm. He has examples, people who are working for him who are registered in two states. Um, I can't speak on that because I honestly don't know if that Steve is Steve Bannon is, no, you can go ahead, I'll pull it up for you. But Steve <laughs> Bannon is registered two in two states. states. Okay. His um, own mm -hmm. political advisor. Well, he made a mistake, I guess. I don't know. I can't speak for Steve Bannon, but what I can say is you're right. There are loopholes and there are people that are voting in more than uh, one state, and we have to actually take a look at that. I mean, I think, I would think that Democrats would be for this as well. No. First of all, Anybody with common sense will not be for a, a, a fraudulent commission that is based on a lie, based on a flat out lie. And that's what this is. It's a lie. I mean, he said three to five million vote illegally. He has no evidence. He creates a commission to try to go find the evidence. Joe, that's nuts. They have operationalized what they've been doing really for the last decade and they being the, the conservative movement in this country, mm -hmm. which is really trying to suppress um, primarily Democratic, primarily minority votes around the country. Notice the places that the president brings up when he talks about this. He talks about Philadelphia. He talks about Chicago. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I wonder what he's talking about there. So this is a president who has finally decided to take voter suppression big league, tried to put a White House seal Got on it, it and tried to make it official. Jameera, Washington Post, January 25th. Shelly, go to my iPad, please. Headline, Steve Bannon was registered to vote in two states despite his efforts to take himself off the rolls in Florida. It says he cast an absentee ballot in New York on October 14, 2016. Oh, but he was still registered in Sarasota, Florida, Jameera, on August 25th. 
No, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This party is, is a clear cut, constant contradiction of itself. Um, a lot of the, the activities that they talk about that are illegal are actually festering within their own party, if not within the White House. I think what's interesting that the president is asking for data from states um, for an, integri an integrity commission, but yet he's asking state, um, state legislators to break the law and go against their own statute to provide data and information that's only going to be used to hurt voters in the long run. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. <laughs> Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.